so let's take a look at our next project or next part of the course. As the instructor, I consider this to be what's called a quick win, meaning we haven't really discussed our materials fully yet. We haven't discussed color pencils, erasers, paper, and so much more. But what I'd like to do is pause before we get to that and tackle this quick win. A quick win is designed to be fun, it's designed to be educational, and it's designed to be a little bit easier. So what we're going to look at today is simply taking a look at the simple idea of a water drop or a dew drop. We're going to talk about that, I'm going to talk about how that works with light, and we're only going to use one color just to start off. Other projects will have a full array of colored pencils, but let's start slowly. So we have a support file of a photograph of dew drops for you. I also have a drawing that you can transfer, and I'll go over drawing and transferring fully in another lesson. But we're just going to take this dew drop and we're going to render it right over here. Now, before I do that, let's talk a little bit about the concept of a dew drop. So here you've noticed I have a several different little drawings here. This is the one we're going to do for our demonstration, but I did two little drawings here in simple graphite just to illustrate a point. There's all kinds of ways to look at a raindrop or a dew drop and to render it. I'm simply going to look at, for today, this way and this way, and we're going to discuss them. So let's take a look at the concept of our first dew drop or water drop. So I'm going to draw out a little diagram, and I'll draw two of them out. Let's pretend that we're looking at this dew drop flat on the table. So it comes out, and it kind of is elongated, and it sort of has a rounded out effect like that. Now, I'm also going to draw it where we have a little bit more of a bird's eye view. So we're looking down at it, and this would be the surface of the table, essentially. So why does it look like this, and how do we need to think about it to draw it? That's important in drawing. Quite often in color pencils, I feel as though people merely start to copy or render a photograph too quickly. You should stop and think about why does the photograph or the reference look the way that it does. So in this case, we have a low light. So our light is here, and it is shining on our dewdrop. So our light comes and where it touches the top, it will cast a shadow of the dewdrop behind it, which is this right here. Okay, so this will all be a cast shadow. That is this right here. So let me draw that out the same way over here while we're working on it. We have a light source, our light comes in, hits the top, comes down, and from that we have a shadow. So I'll just fill that in. So this bubble, or this dew drop, is casting the shadow of sort of the dome of the water. So what that means is a lot of this is in a little bit of shade as it rounds out and turns away from the light. However, as this light shines in, it is going to be heavily illuminating the ground plane, or right through here, that table plane, because the light is actually hitting that spot. So we start to see that right in through here, as well as here. Now as this light shines through, it will have a highlight, and I'll draw a little square here, or a little circle or a diffuse light. Um, we usually call that a specular highlight. In fact, that is what we call it. 
So this light comes in and actually bounces off the water droplet and hits you, the viewer, in the eye, thus causing that specular highlight. Same thing, it bounces off, hits you in the eye. Now, also while this light is coming down, you'll notice it's hitting this rim of the droplet. So this starts to have a tone and it is casting a shadow you know, underneath it you know, right through here. So there's a cast shadow and some turning form from this turning down right, right through here. So you start to play a game where you have, you know, dark, then we have our light, or we could say our highlight, or our specular highlight, and then we have an area of light that's being illuminated, right, from the table, and then we have an area of dark, which again is the cast shadow. So notice we have dark light, dark light, dark. So we're playing that game. Okay, so again we have the value of the table, we have the dark of the shadow, we have our highlight, a little bit of a gradient, then we move into our light. Now right here I didn't really talk about this that much. Typically speaking, that is where the light is shining through here and sometimes it actually bounces off the table and sort of back through the back end, all right? And other times, if the light is low enough, it just travels right through and actually hits that spot on the table. So there'd be a little light, typically, or a little anomaly sort of right through there, and this kind of lightens up, and it gets darker as it gets closer to the object or the dewdrop. So the shadow will be a little darker through here. The same thing is happening with this dewdrop. We just have a higher light source. So I'll draw that out more of a circle and it has sort of a drop like. So this is all of our table. Same thing, light is shining through. It's at a higher angle. So as it comes through there's going to be a nice highlight that bounces off or specular highlight into your eye. This has a little bit of shade to it, right? not only because of a form shadow but the cast shadow of the bubble. The light is bouncing into here off the table and there's a little form shadow in here as this curves back around and then this casts the shadow of the whole bubble or water droplet, kind of right through here. Now the same thing is going to happen. You're going to pick up a little bit, not much, a little bit of glare right through there. And on this one you see a little bit of sliver of light. You'll often find that coming right through the back end. Same reason. Typically it's either going through the bubble and going on through or it's bouncing off the table inside and coming out and causing that nice little highlight. Quite often as well, light will be bouncing off the table and you can get a little bit of a nice, just a little bit of a highlight right there. And every once in a while you can get a little odd, you know, reflection maybe like right in sort of through there. So take time, study and understand what you're drawing and look for these little different anomalies that happen in nature that you can discover, learn, and sort of put them away in your visual library, so to speak. So let's get started on the color pencil aspect. So for this project, once again, we've included a file of a photograph of some different kinds of water droplets. And I've just gridded out a little bit of square here. And what I'm going to do to make this nice and neat right, is I'm just going to use what's called blue painter's tape. This is a low tack tape. To get more of the tack out of the tape, I can put it down on a piece of paper and carefully pull it up and take a little tack out. 
I can also put it down on the table, take a little bit of the tack off, or I can put it up against my clothes and get a little bit of the tack off. Even though it's low tack, I like it to be even lower tack so it doesn't pull up the paper when I pull up my tape to reveal a nice taped edge. But I'll lay that down and burnish it. I've got some pieces here that are ready to go and I've already dabbed off some of the tackiness to it. And that's good enough. I'm just going to very, very, very quickly sketch out the dew drops. And I'm going to draw very, very, very lightly. And I'm just going to make sort of an oblong circle. And I'm going to put the highlight right there. And we'll bring the shadow out like that. And I'll put one more right here. So I can just sort of hint at where they're at. I'm going to go through transferring and how to get a drawing down on paper later on in this course. Again, this is just a quick win just to get the ball rolling. But notice that I'm going to take a kneaded eraser. We'll talk about this more in the class. You need it to clean it. And I'm going to basically dab that graphite so that it becomes a very, very light drawing and the graphite doesn't interfere with my color pencil. So I have that up enough, um, and I'm satisfied with that. So I'm going to start this off, and you can use any color you want to, but I thought a nice sort of sepia brown color would look good. Um, this is burnt ochre, and the number is 943 but any color will do. I also have a scrap piece of paper. This just sort of protects the rest of it and my demo from getting smeared up while I'm working. So I'm gonna come in and very lightly start to define the edge and bring out the drawing with the colored pencil that I've chosen. So we're going to be doing gradients that move from a dark color into a mid-tone and into a light. But during this process, because it's the beginning and we want it simple, we're going to use the white of the paper to show through. So this is a great time to work on your pressure control. for this smaller one over here. And then I'm simply going to work either with a electric pencil sharpener or a handheld one. I often find that using an electric one helps get the pencil sharp, but if I really want to get a nice end, I'll switch over to a handheld one to get a little bit of a nicer point. So I'm going to start with my darkest areas and work through there. I'm going to build up in a manner that is somewhat circular in nature. So 
So if you'll notice, and we talk more about this throughout the course, I'm, I'm essentially moving in a circular pattern or motion. I'm making little circles overlapping other circles. Um, this makes a nice gradient and it makes it more difficult to tell where you're actually making the mark. This circle can sort of be expanded into more of an oval or sometimes I'll even bring it like this or even even you know narrower where it almost seems like I'm doing a line back and forth but I'm really doing this oval or circle over and over and I can narrow it down or tighten it or I can widen it out so that's how I'm approaching rendering with the white of the paper I'm using what's called low or medium pressure control meaning I'm not denting the paper or overworking it my hand does not hurt because I'm holding the pencil so hard. I want it darker I'm simply putting a little more pressure on the pencil I'm tightening up my pattern or my circular motion so to speak and I also keep going over it in layers meaning I'm building it up I'm not trying to get the value right that darker value and all these things will be discussed more in depth Right, throughout this entire course. So this is just to get you started to have fun and understand color pencils. Think about having continuous gradation, whether it's fast or slow. And we try not to create any hard lines in um, representational work or more realistic work. You need to be very careful how you're approaching your lines. And what I mean by gradation is what I'm doing here. I'm gradually going either from light into dark, making it darker, or moving from dark, as I am now, moving into a much lighter hand. I'm working on that pressure. Again, all of this is going to be covered in great detail once we get further along into the class. So I'm just going to keep coming through and slowly building up what I feel are my darker darks. Again, thinking dark to light to dark to light, playing that, that game.
So I'm starting to get the drawing or the dark parts established. So now I'm very quickly going to start to work on throwing down a tone, which is this in the background. This tone is a gradient. It's moving from darker to a little bit lighter. And you'll see that I usually choke back on the pencil because this is lighter and I try to get a rhythm going. I'm still doing a circle that's much more elongated. I'm kind of moving around in that sort of format where it's an elongated kind of ellipse. And I'm really letting the weight of the pencil do a lot of the work for me. This takes time, it takes practice, um, it takes muscle control, or we could say pressure control, eye-hand coordination. So this is something that you'll just work on and build throughout the class. Trust me. All these things will get better and better with each project, and with each project you'll have a greater and greater understanding of the materials and how we're going to work with them. It's important during this time to build good quality habits and to build patience and fortitude. Sometimes these things that we're trying to work on and achieve can simply take a lot of time. But not only to do them, but to figure out how to do them well. And consistently. So I'm just going to keep building up this background a little bit more. I'm going to come right back over to my darker part and keep building up slowly. So at this point I'm going to change directions and I'm going to come across the background once again with a, you know light to moderate pressure and I'm sort of going to come across it and I'm just working on building out or building up a nice unified background that has a little bit of a gradient moving from a light to dark or dark to light. So this is starting to shape up. We're starting to get a three-dimensional quality to it. So I'm going to go back in and keep building up those darks. So I'm going to go right back to where I began. And again, I'm not pressing too hard. I would say I have moderate pressure. And you'll see sometimes the texture of the paper will show through. And if it does and it's in one of those darker areas, I can just come in with a nice sharp point and kind of touch it up and get down there in the crevices of the tooth of the paper. And we'll talk all about papers later on. I'm just going to keep working up this dark, building it up slowly taking my time, enjoying the medium, enjoying the process of working, seeing detail. And I've choked back up on the pencil, meaning I'm holding it closer, I'm holding it tighter but I'm not holding it tight enough to where it hurts my hand. So 
So anywhere there's a softer gradient or a lighter value, you'll typically see me pull back on the pencil so that it helps me with the weight of the pencil. I'm applying very light strokes and I'm willing to build that up slowly and be patient. So at this point, I'm just going to keep on building. I'm going to go back to my background and work on this gradient a little bit more. You also see a lot of times that I'll wear a, a point flat and all you got to do is roll it over to get you know to a fine point so you can roll your pencil so now I'm back to the sharper part of that point. And I'll get to a point where I'm working so lightly, you can almost barely see a mark you know, coming in. But it is. It's building up slowly. So I'm going to come in and just keep on building up. As this shadow comes around, it lightens up just a little bit in the middle. It's the darkest as it pulls around here on the sides. It's the darkest when it's closest to the dew drop or water drop, and it lightens up as it pulls out this way. And we have that little bit of light shining through that bubble and hitting this part of the table. And in some cases, it simply hits the table and bounces up and kind of comes through. Now I'm starting to apply more of a moderate to a harder pressure as I'm working. And it just looks so much better when you build up your darks. So at this point, you could call this finished or rendered, and I think that's good enough for our starting or our opening lesson. So if you wanted to push this project a little bit more and you're really comfortable with colored pencils, you can push it and we could blend a little bit. We could use a stump or a tortillion. I will go over all these materials more in depth later. This is a stump. This is a tortillion. Very similar. They're both paper. But I could come through and I could start to unify 
just a little bit, and it may be really hard to see, but this will help to unify the texture, unify the values, just, it'll smudge it just a little bit. So you can see how it's picking up and kind of pushing around this pigment. And I'm not, I'm still doing this very lightly. And I'm using this almost in a very similar fashion as those little circles that we were doing while we were using the color pencil. This will help soften a lot of your edges. Okay, Your edges on your shadow should fade out and they should be soft. So I'll make sure to push that concept just a little bit through here. And I can come across that entire background, that subtle gradient or shading that we have laid down, and I'll just push that tortillion or stump, if you have one, kind of right through there. And we don't want to overdo it. And I can just come back in here and there and touch up a few spots. And then we'll make sure to pop a few of our highlights out with an eraser or an electric eraser. And we'll show you that here in a moment. So let's take a quick look at this as we're approaching the end of this little project. As I discussed earlier, there's all kinds of fun and neat little anomalies that happen when light kind of shoots through and either comes through the back of the bubble or the dew drop. Or sometimes it hits the table and bounces back up and through. So you get these nice little interesting notes of light. And you want to sort of look and put in um, when and where you want to. It's not uncommon to have a secondary little glare or specular highlight like I have here. It's also not uncommon as sometimes you'll see a little bit of an essence of a rim or a shadow in here and then a little bit of that light shooting through. Here we don't see it, but we have a little bit of a sliver of a light here. You know, as that light bounces around and off the table, we have a thin little sliver here and one here. So it's your choice as the artist as to what sort of drop or dew drop or what kind of interesting lighting scenario you want to put in. I'm going to push this concept right through here just a little bit on this bigger drop. So if we take a look at it, we just have a highlight with a little bit of mid-tone through here and there's a little bit of a darkening. So let me lay down that value and then we can come in with an eraser and I'll show you that. And we'll come in with an electric eraser if you have one. Um, those are great tools to use. So I'm adding a little bit of that rim, which sometimes appears depending on your light source. And we can start to come in with a pearl eraser. If I erase, I always make sure to clean my eraser off on a piece of paper. Or I can come in with a nice smaller regular eraser and I can pull out a little bit more highlight here so we don't need a fancy eraser regular one will do you'll notice I'm dabbing that to pick up some of the color and then we can also use an electric eraser so now that we've taken this a little further 
Uh, we're going to come in with an electric eraser, but a, a regular eraser is just fine. So an eraser, we can come in and just make sure we have a, a nice bright highlight. But I do like the quickness of an electric eraser. So let me touch up a few things. I want the specular highlights to have a nice, crisp look to them. And an eraser, an electric eraser, really helps. And I'll just touch up a few things and darken down a couple of key areas. And I think that's good enough. We have a nice value range, meaning from dark to light, this nice dark moving into a mid-tone, and then a highlight, and then a nice specular highlight. So let's pull our tape off and see how this looks. I highly recommend pulling your tape off at a 45 degree angle. And even though we took the tack out of this tape, if you warm it up with a hair dryer, I assure you, you won't tear any of your paper. So I'll do that real quickly. And that tape comes off very easily once it's nice and warm. So we have our first assignment done with just one simple pencil. And I think we've created a nice um, little image of a water droplet. See you in the next lesson. Hi, I'm Jonathan Simon. And in this course, I'm going to teach you how to draw with and work with color pencils. You'll learn how to use various techniques and tools to add appropriate value shading, line, form, proportion, texture, and of course, color, as you have fun along the way. We will start with drawing a water droplet, including the shadow and a reflection of the light that helps give it its realistic depth and form. You'll then learn about various materials in this course, including pencil brands and sets, as well as other tools for blending, burnishing, and erasing. Don't worry. Any kind of color pencils and paper will work for this course. We will then review various mark making techniques so that we have a strong foundation before we start the rest of the projects. Next, you will draw a realistic globe as you learn about the portrayal of shadow and light, also known as value. Then you'll learn how to effectively draw an organic still life, specifically a group of tomatoes. Support files are included for all the representational drawings, so you can follow along if you want. You'll then draw a frog, and I'll explain how sometimes we can adjust, remove, or add elements to a drawing. Next, we will not use a photo for reference, but rather draw a character from our imagination. In the next project, you will learn about producing a landscape drawing with a large gradient in the sky and a boat in the foreground. This colorful drawing should be yet another fun project to add to your portfolio. Finally, you will learn how to draw various types of skin tones before producing the final project, a cropped in portrait. Using various methods of drawing, blending, and burnishing, we can produce a representational yet creative artistic portrait. We also have a specific section in this course related to color theory and various ways of tracing and transferring your image. This course comes with over 25 hours of helpful instruction and video demonstrations that you can follow along with. Besides the video demonstrations and lectures, 
This course includes all the photo support files to use for reference, as well as a PDF booklet that includes the printable worksheets that students can follow along with. The booklet includes other useful information, such as a list of color pencils used in the course and color theory practice worksheets. Enrollment also comes with exclusive access to our critique and feedback group. I'm Jonathan, a professional artist and educator. I've been teaching students how to draw for many years now. As a university professor of drawing and painting, I've had a lifetime career in art, from graphic design to illustration to digital illustration. Before becoming a full-time artist, commercially my work and illustrations have been published on various magazine covers, advertisements, and commissioned for various companies. Some of my art has been featured in prominent galleries throughout the United States. In this course, my professional experience and education will provide you with expert guidance as you improve your drawing skills. My goal is to equip you with the skills and knowledge you need to produce amazing drawings. Jump on in the course and start drawing today. Get feedback from me and your peers as you build your skills and your portfolio. I offer a 30 day money back guarantee. So if you're not satisfied, you can get a refund. But I know you'll love this course as you start to produce beautiful drawings. So don't wait, join today, and I'll see you in this course.